This is the plaintiff, Geneva Wilson. She says the defendant's vicious dog mauled her dog, Dodger, in front of her daughter. And sadly, he did not survive. The cops trace the killer dog to the defendant. The uncaring guy refuses to compensate her for her terrible loss. And she's suing for the $5,000 she's owed. This is the defendant, Lamise Graham. He says his dog didn't kill the plaintiff's dog, and this is just a case of mistaken dog identity. His dog had no signs of a struggle, no blood, no dirt, nothing. There are plenty of big dogs roaming around their neighborhood, and since he's seen no proof of his dog doing anything wrong, he owes nothing. He's accused of not caring. All parties, please raise your right hand. People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Millian is presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Doctor. You're welcome, Your Honor. Okay, Ms. Wilson, you are suing Mr. Graham for $5,000 in damages because according to you, Mr. Graham's dog mauled your dog. Tell me what happened. Phyllis was walking my two dogs outside on a leash and okay, and who is Phyllis? My daughter. Okay. And the dog came from down the Hold block. on one second. Phyllis, I'm going to need you to come up front and center there because you're the one who saw it. You were not out there, right? No. Okay. So, Phyllis, what happened that day? Okay, it was 7.30. I took my dogs out. Had leashes How on many my... dogs did you have with you? Two dogs. Okay. Two boys' what... dogs. Say it again? Two boys' dogs. Okay. What one kind of dog? One was a chihuahua mm -hmm. and one, one yeah, is a... Cocker Spaniel. And one is a Cocker Spaniel. Okay. So... I went out my house. I had my leashes on my boys' dogs. I came out of my house and I stopped in front of my house. All of a sudden, this dog coming down the street unleashed with a capital U, unleashed by itself. Okay. Attacked and my chihuahua. Hold on one second. Did you know what kind of a dog it was? It was gray. Other than being gray, do you know what? It was what... a pit bull and it was gray. A gray pit bull. Gray Comes pit bull. Out. Had you seen that dog in the neighborhood loose before this day? Yeah. Yes? yes. How many times had you seen like, the dog? Maybe once or twice, just okay. walking around the neighborhood. With no leash, no leash and no nothing. owner. Nothing. Did you, at that time, when this attack happens, at that time, did you know who the owner of the dog was? Yes. You did? How, yes. how did you know? Because the dog went to the house. Okay. And I seen, the, I seen the owner be in his garage working on wood or something. How far away is that house from you, from where you live? My house is here. It's like down the block. Okay, so can you, from your front door, can you see the house? Yes, the dark gray house, yes. Okay, so the dog runs into that house, and then what happens? I got scared and I panicked. I picked up my dog, went to my house, and I went and told my father. My father came out. Okay, but you have two dogs out two there. Two dogs. Did you pick up both dogs or one dog? I picked up one dog. And what, so where was the other dog? His dog hurt my hurt my dog. Right. So where so the other dog, when you go inside with one dog, where is the other dog? Dead in the grass. So when your father comes outside, is the pit bull still there, yes or yes, no? Yes, the pit bull is still there. Okay. And in what my, does in the driveway. And what does your father do to the pit bull? My father starts swinging at the pit bull. Because my father um saw what the pit bull pit bull did. Had done. Had done. Okay, so your dog was not in the pit bull's jaw when your dad was swinging at the pit bull? No. Okay, and then when is the first time that you folks speak to the defendant? Okay. <clears throat> okay. My husband spoke to him the next day. He came over. Is your husband here to testify? No. Okay, go on. Okay, the police came out that evening, and I didn't know where the dog came from. Okay. Because I went looking, I went down the block trying to see where the dog came from. Nobody knew. When the police came out, I guess they asked, you know, the other people whose houses I had rang the doorbell to. Nobody answered the doorbell, but somebody told them where the pit bull lived. The police went down there and spoke to the man. Then the police came back and gave me his name and address, the house number, whatnot, you know, that it was his pit bull. Okay, the police gave you some tickets, correct? Yes. May I see those, please? I, did, I forgot them at the house, so I apologize. You forgot? The I evidence did. against you at the house. I did, I did. That I sounds did. convenient. It was uh, it was basically one for the dog getting out and then one allegedly my dog killing the dog. Okay, well, let's talk about that. Did your dog get out? My dog did get out that day. How many times has your dog gotten out? Uh, once before. 
Why, how is your dog able to? Why is it always a pit bull that gets out? Why isn't it ever a poodle? Consistent. Yeah. It was why? Awesome. How was your dog able to get out? I was home. Me and my daughter was asleep that day. Um, I put the dog in the backyard, let her play or whatever. Um, I woke up around six o'clock to knock on my door. The little kids down the street brought the dog back to me. And what did they tell you had happened? They didn't tell me anything. They was like, oh, your dog been down to my house. For what time a while. did this attack happen to the Chihuahua? About 6.30. 6.30 at night? Yes, 6.30. Well, they brought the dog to him at 6. So well, how do I know that? 6.30. How do I know that? Why don't you show me the tickets? They'll tell me what time the, the, the uh, animal control spoke to you. Uh, you can't well, show the me animal the control didn't speak to me that day. Oh, when did you get tickets? Days later. The police showed up to my house at 10.30 that night. At 10.30 that night? Right. And told you Knocking what? on the door, asked me that I have a gray dog, this and that. I was like, yeah, I have a gray dog. And then it was like, do you know about the incident went on? I was like, what incident? I was, I don't know. So he started telling me, or oh, Chihuahua got killed. How many hours was your dog out unsupervised while you slept? Like I said, I, I got home around about 3.30, 3.30ish. The kids brought, brought my dog home around about six. So how many hours? That was about three, about hours? three hours. Your dog was out roaming. Your pit bull was out roaming, but but uh, you're confident your pit bull didn't eat the chihuahua and kill it. How do you know? For three hours, you have no idea. How did your dog get out? You didn't answer me. How did your dog? Oh, get out? Um, he broke through the gate, wooden gate. How did the dog crack. break through the wooden gate? So so on uh, on the side of my house, I have a gate that opens. Okay. Where it was a little tiny crack at the bottom. How and did the crack happen? Hmm. How did the crack get there? To well, it, has been, it had been there since I bought the house. Okay. And um, she literally broke the other panel. So how did your dog get out that other time that you admit to? The other time? Yeah. She, she um, I think I left the gate open that day. Okay. So uh, do you folks have a copy of the tickets he got or no? No, they didn't give us any. They're not online, and you know, um, and you were asked to bring them, right? And I, I, I totally, I told, I told, I totally forgot. I apologize. Right. Do you think that maybe there would be cause for me to be concerned that maybe you admitted certain things in those tickets, and that it's I should draw some <laughs> inference against you by virtue of the fact that you're uniquely in control? Uh, in possession of those and you didn't bring them to court? Do you think maybe I should think that maybe you're hiding something from me? I wouldn't hide, no, no. I All right, did you ever tell the police that you don't, know, you have no idea if your dog did that? That's what I told I told them, yeah. that doesn't sound like my dog. My dog's never been vicious towards anyone. I have kids, I have a two-year-old. That's what boy. everyone says when they're and being happened, sued for it. Everybody happened. says, oh, look, here's pictures of my, my dog licking my baby's bottom. You know, like there's I've always never. little things like that that people say about their own dog because they feel that way and they do feel that way. Even but little, maybe, but, 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 but. That's but. Yes, and this is nothing against pit bulls. It's something against pit bull owners who routinely end up in court in front of me. Maybe you should be real, real careful that your dog doesn't get out. In particular, your dog, because there's certain things about that breed that make it a, a, a real deadly thing to the other person, child, dog, cat, whatever. You know, it's just, there's something, you know, we all know what we're talking about. They latch, they don't let go. They, you know, it's right, so, right. maybe that's the last dog that should be getting out. Well, you know, last or second to last. Um, I understand. Yeah, and, uh, and your dog is, Apparently, you, a court, you admit to one time, and you say you've seen the dog out how many times? Phyllis? More than one time. More than Just one time. Around. Okay. Did you ever speak to Mr. Graham? I spoke to him one day. I told him, I said, uh, I'm the lady whose dog your dog killed. And what did he say? He said, well, he was uh, young and he was new in the neighborhood. And the next day, they, him and his wife came over. I had been up crying all night. My husband answered the door. He came to apologize. What did he say? that he was sorry and he offered to cut our grass. Cut your grass? Yes, cut our grass and that we want another dog. Okay. So when my husband told me that, I said, another dog is not gonna replace no. our dog. Him cutting our grass is not gonna replace our well, dog. Well, nothing's gonna no. replace no. your, like it's uh, your dog, nothing's gonna bring your dog back to life. That's for sure, yeah, so, including money. Yeah, nothing so brings your dog back. So the next morning I called Animal Control and let them know what had happened and what not. Oh, so that night you hadn't called Animal Control? No, the police came, You called the, the police. police was called. Okay. Do you have the police report? I have the police officer's name and everything. No, that doesn't do me any good. Do you have a police report or no? 
How, what did, did you have to take your dog, um, how did you, did you bury your dog? What did you do with the dog? Well, we buried him in our backyard. Okay, I got it. With three, two of his little monkey toys that he plays with. Um, did you want to respond to what she said that you came over and apologized and stuff yeah, and I offered to over, cut her grass? I, I came over and apologized. What were you apologizing for? Welcome back to the People's Court. I'm Harvey Levin. The plaintiff says the defendant is as uncaring as they come. She says that his dog killed her dog and he needs to pay up. We're going to find out who's right and who's wrong. Let's go back into the courtroom. At the time, I, I, I maybe it was my, like I told right, the Right, so what happened to dog. change your opinion from that I day to, to counsel. now? Talk to I what? talked to counsel. I talked to to, to a lawyer. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. And what did the lawyer say? And said they need to prove it that okay. it was your dog because my dog didn't come home with no blood on it. It didn't come like it been an altercation with. Okay, him. but you have to understand it's not a criminal case. It has to be proven beyond and to the exclusion of every reasonable doubt. It's a civil case where I have to find that it's more likely than not. Um, and I have you telling them I'm so sorry this happened. So I'm, I'm, I'm guessing if I was a betting woman, I bet that those tickets have you admitting it to the cop. I don't know what you'd admit because the dog is gone for all that time. So you don't know what the dog did or didn't do. It doesn't matter that you've changed your mind now because you talked to a lawyer and now you don't feel apologetic about it. So you're offering to, why are you offering to cut their grass? That's what I want. Hmm. Why cut their grass? Like what was well, that? Well, I do. I do landscaping and. Uh, oh, 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 oh. So at you the time, offered. At the time. At the time. Okay, so you were offering to do something ni nice for them and what? And buy them another dog when you said, "Do you want another dog?" At the dog? time. At the time. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, I got pictures of my dog playing with other dogs that it did. Yes, know. I'm sure you do. Yeah. Can I see that? That one? The the bigger dog. That one? Yes. All right. Look, um, you're suing for the cost of the dog, and you say the cost of the dog was $270? Yes. My son bought it for me as a gift. Okay. But is this a purebred chihuahua? Yeah. Really? Let me show you Dodger. Scroll across. Okay. Okay. Um, you're also suing for the cost of caring for the dog throughout the dog's life yes. because you feel that that was a waste. And you're suing for pain and suffering for your other pets. Tell me about that. Okay. Boy Boy is sitting at the door every day like he's waiting for Dodger to come back in. Jet, my cat, had been throwing up. Jet tries to get out the door every day like he's going to get Dodger. My house is quiet now. Dodger started everybody to bark, and as soon as we pulled up in the car, that's our alarm system. Now we don't have an alarm system. The rest of them don't start barking until we actually come in the house. Mm -hmm. The phone ring in, would ring in the morning. Dodger started everybody to barking. He used to go get her. He runs and jumps in my bed every morning for me to play with him and pet him until he has fillers with the food. Then, hey, he can forget about me. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Can but I, I mean, say something? Yes. And then when I come, when when I come from work, y'all dodge our baby, greet me, you know, so I could play with him and pet him and everything, and you know, cause that was our baby. Yeah. You know. No, I understand that um, losing a pet is horrible. I, I my, the dog next door ate my cat in front of my children, oh, and wow. um, and that's not something you soon forget. And I understand that there is a great deal of pain and suffering involved, but. The, in the eyes of the law, our pets, no matter how much we love them and no matter how much there are children in our heads and, um, you know, my dog is the one child who, you know, has no conditions on her love for me. Yeah, you know, my daughters uh, <laughs> may have conditions, but my dog doesn't and I would put my life down for my mm -hmm. dog as well. But you have to understand that pain and suffering is not something that you can collect uh, because the law sees the dogs as property. So it's actual damages that you get to sue for. You're also suing for the cost of caring for the dog because you feel what, that it was a waste because the dog didn't get to live its full life? Well, it wasn't a waste because we love the dog, right. but you know, I know, but I mean, I took him for all his shots and everything. I know, and I know, but that's also something that you can't 
sue for mm -hmm. in a situation. There's only one thing you can sue for, and that's the value of the dog. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's not even the value of a new puppy dog. It's the value of that seems awful low for a, for a, a, ch a purebred Chihuahua. Maybe it's not a pure. I don't I don't know what the deal is. But he paid for. Okay, so you're you're estimating the value of the dog as the two hundred and seventy dollars. And um, based on what I've heard, I'm satisfied that there's sufficient proof that the one pit bull roaming the neighborhood at the time is, and I'm not gonna sit here and when you say, oh, I know that they brought the dog back at six o'clock, you know, the tickets say 6.30 is when, I'm not gonna buy that. So $270, verdict for the plaintiff. That is my judgment. Good luck, folks. Hold on, please. Let me just say something to you. You have now admitted that your pit bull's gotten out twice, okay? Don't let your pit bull get out again, yes, yes. all right? Do what you have to do to get a sturdier gate or whatever you have to do so that your pit bull is not roaming the neighborhood. Yes, you are. And little kids have to bring your pit bull to you and wake you up after three hour snoozes, okay? Yes, you are. All right. So the plaintiff has prevailed, uh, but she didn't get the $5,000 she was seeking. Mr. Graham, the defendant, has just come out. Do you feel at all sorry for her? I do, I do. I love pets, I love dogs. Um, and like I said, if it was my dog, I apologize. I guess the one thing is you better listen to the judge and do something about that gate and your fence and well, fix I'm, it. You know what I mean? I'll make sure it's locked up and won't get out again. Thank you. All right. Uh, Mr. Graham, you're on your, the, the exit's on your left. If you'll head out there, I'll get Mr. Ms. Wilson to come in, and we'll say hi to Ms. Wilson to see what she's thinking right now. I'm sure she's a little upset. It's a, a real gut punch to lose a dog, especially huh? when you see one killed in front of you. Ms. Wilson, let me ask you a little bit of what you think the judge just decided. You were asking $5,000. You certainly didn't get that, unfortunately. What are you thinking right now? Well, there's nothing I can do about it, but his fence has been broken for three, de three months since his dog killed my dog, and the fence is still broken. He hasn't tried to repair it. All right, I'm sorry for you, but uh, that's, the, that's the judge's decision, and you're going to have to live with it, uh, just like everybody else who goes something like this through okay. something like this so thank, thank you, you very, very much. much all right well doug this is an interesting case because maybe if this were a criminal case of sorts maybe the plaintiff wouldn't prevail because the standard there is beyond a reasonable doubt but the standard in a civil case is just tipping the scales proving that it's just slightly more likely than not that's all you have to do and in this case look this was the only pit bull in the neighborhood the defendant admitted that his pit bull escaped and it's sort of two plus two equals four. The judge didn't have a problem saying the burden of proof was met. How do we get rid of my 56 year old brother? He came here to finish school, but is not working or taking classes. We have no privacy. His girlfriend stays over all the time. That's not what we agreed on. 56 year old brother. Oh, sleeping on the sofa or something. Or okay. Staying in the house, right. You know, it was uh, Ben Franklin who said, uh, guests like fish begin to stink after three days. Yeah, right? yeah. This guy's been there a lot longer than that. Right. So how do you get rid of him? I, I would say you could claim he was a trespasser and call the police and have him come and take him away, but they probably wouldn't do it. They'd it would probably... depend on how long he's been there. If right. he's been living there, he's getting mail there, that's his residence, and, right. and both sides agree that's right. a, that's been his residence. Then you're in the eviction realm. Now you're in the eviction realm. Right. So I you've mean... actually got to go to court, even though he's right. not paying you rent or whatever. Right. If that is his, if he's been living there, right. you've got to you've got to actually go the eviction route. That's the right. safer route, but that right. actually requires money, and yeah. you need to go to court. You need to. You could do it yourself. You don't need a lawyer. Most right, but that, courthouses that, that have self-help I mean, desks. If, if he has a leasehold interest such that you have to go through the eviction process. But um, he doesn't have to. Do, he, what's his rent? What's he paying? No, he's, let's say he's paying zero. Okay. You should be, listen, you should be able to tell him, you need to get out. How long do you need? That's what you got. You need to get out and then get him out. Yeah, I mean, you, you shouldn't have it, to get You can to make that. it really uncomfortable for someone like that in your house. I mean, I, I, it always amazes me when these cases do come up occasionally. I had one when I was a judge. Like, why is this person still staying there? Why doesn't he or she just get the hell out? If, if it's miserable and the other person who really owns the house or really does have the leasehold interest doesn't want him there and is constantly either not talking to him or... Because they're not paying rent. That's probably why. <laughs>